Hello, ladies and gentlemen, it's Mike here at Game From Scratch, and it feels like it's been for friggin' ever since we had a Godot engine release. I mean, it hasn't been one since, uh, let's see, it was March the 3rd, 2025. Okay, so Godot 4 was just released earlier this month, but that doesn't mean we can't stop waiting for Godot. It's just sort of in our nature to wait for Godot. And that is what is coming next. We now have Godot 4.5 Dev 1. Now, i got to point out, Dev 1 is as pre-beta as you can get. Like, this is basically pre-alpha, pre-everything. This is literally Godot 4.4 plus some new features. Eventually, you can think of it that way. Well, what's going to happen is we're going to have like Dev 1 through Dev like 6 or 7 or 8, somewhere in that neighborhood. And then what they'll do is do a feature freeze. And then they'll start doing beta tests, release candidates, and so on. So this is very early on, but we've got a couple of exciting new features in Godot 4.5, sorry, 4.5 Dev 1. So we're going to go ahead and check those out. So here we are. This is Godot. This is Godot 4. 4.5.1, sorry, 4.5 dev one. And if you use this version for production, you are not doing something smart. So anyways, I'm going to showcase this new features in this version. There's not a ton of new stuff here, but there's a couple of exciting things to get, well, excited about uh, as we wait for Godot 4.5 to arrive. So first one we've got here is a change to tile maps. Now, if you use tile maps, this one is actually going to have some pretty major ramifications because there is a huge performance payoff to what we're about to see here. So we're going to create a new tile map here, and we're going to have a new tile here. So let's create our new tile set. Uh, and I believe it is 128 by 128, our single solitary tile is. We're going to go ahead, turn physics on like so, and we're going to go ahead down here to physics like this guy, and we're going to make sure that it's set to force show. So now what we're going to do is set up our physics on this object. So we've got our new tile set, and the way it used to work with tile sets is every object had its own physics. So that means if you had 10,000 tiles, you would have 10,000 uh, collision shapes. That is not ideal. So now we got our new tile here, set it up just like normal. So there is our new tile in. We will select said tile over here, go on down to the physics category here, and we will set up the box around it. So we're setting up our physics shape. I'm going to set it up for the whole object like so, like there, like there, and then close it, and then we'll grab this guy and move it to the corner. So there we go. So we now have our physics defined over this object. So it used to be if I painted with this tile before, we would have collision, 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 collision. We basically have, if we painted 10,000 of these, we would have 10,000 collision rectangles. That obviously is going to have a few performance ramifications. The good news is that has been fixed. So now what we've got, we'll select our tile over here, make sure that we are in painting mode, and I will draw it in the world. So you'll see we have our collision shape around the tile, just like you would normally have. Let's go ahead and draw another one. Boom. We have another shape. Now let's go around a corner here. And what you're going to notice here, if I zoom in and hopefully compression doesn't screw this up that much, see that line right through there? Well, that is actually a vertex cut through the middle of this face. So what we have is a polygon, a polygon, and a cut. So what we've now got is one polygon shape. So instead of being a shape, a shape, a shape, we have one shape of multiple polygons. So as you see, as I add a new one, it changes the shape up again. So as we keep adding these in, it's basically creating the minimalist containing polygon collision around our object. So let's just go ahead and paint here. And you see we're getting, it goes in and out accordingly. There we go. So it's creating this one optimized collision instead of a whole bunch. So again, come in here and delete it, make it a little bit more arbitrary. And then you see, again, our... Uh, our polygon is being set up around our shape uh, and conforming. So this is going to create uh, a lot of optimization when you're using tile maps with physics enabled because there is now a single physical object or physical collision shape for an entire tile map layer. That again, should have some pretty good ramifications for speed. Definitely a nice improvement there. Now we got a couple of other improvements here as well. One of the areas we saw was we added the addition of this game uh, setup. So we've got two new additions to the way this game window works. Works. So let's go ahead and set this guy up. So let's go select current. Uh, we will save our scene. There we go. So here is our project like so. Well, the one new feature you've got is if you've got audio going and you've got your game running like this, you can now mute it. And you don't have to do anything weird to go and unmute it or so on. So if the sound of your own game is just driving you insane, you got background music looping or whatever, in your game preview, you now have this mute feature. That is quite nice. Another new feature that we've got here, and I'm going to have to come in here and I think I'm going to have to get rid of a little bit so it fits my screen a little better. All right, so there we go. And now what we're going to do is basically add in a couple of sprite objects like this and like this. So we have multiple objects in our scene. And then we're going to go back to running in our game window again, like so. I'm going to switch over here to 2D mode. Now, the big thing that they added with this game window is it's sort of like um, the way it works in Unity. You can do live previews of your running game. So what I can do is I can now select this guy, and then we can see what's going on with this guy. So over here, you see our sprite set up. And let's go ahead and, oops, ah, there. So you see, rotated. 
Uh, now I need to set that here. I think it's always on top. I don't know where always on top went, but basically, all right, so there we go. So we've got this guy rotated live as we did this rotation over here. Now, now what you can do with this game window is I can actually go in here and multi-select like so. So now I have two objects selected and I'm going to do a rotate on them. I'll switch back here. And then you see they've both rotated. By the way, that overwrote the setting on both. Now, where it gets really kind of interesting, so you have this multi-select ability here now. So I can do single click, select, select. You can see the single object is selected. Shift click, and I can have multiple selections, which you can edit at the same time. And I can even select, so right now I'm doing sprites. So what you're seeing is I'm getting all the sprite stuff here. But when I add my tile map into the selection, then it's going to go down to the lowest common denominator. So you see here, canvas item and node 2D, because this this is a canvas item and a node 2D. And in this case, so it's, it's a sprite, you're getting all the sprite properties. Here, still two sprites, so you're still getting all of the sprite properties. So if I wanted to go ahead and I could flip it like so, and then you see down here, it's it's flipped accordingly, flip V, uh, and, and then so on. So I can have immediately updated over here, but if I select a third object that doesn't match, it only gives us the things that are in common to all of them. Now, the thing to know about this one is when I stop my preview and then I come back into it, the changes are not persistent. So the big new change here is the ability to multi-select objects when previewing your game. Uh, so an interesting change there for sure. And again, we now have this audio mute button here as well. Uh, and then the one other change, honestly, I'm not sure that I'm in love with, but again, I'm not totally in love with this whole UID change that they've done in general. So I go ahead here and I'm going to create a script. So let's go here um, and let's do, let's do on ready uh, var icon equals like so. And what you could do now is I could drag something in like this and then boom, there is our actual object. Well, what you can actually do now is if you want, as I can hold down control, I'm oh, sorry, click this guy, drag, hold down control when I drop. And what you'll see is it's now pulling it in as a UID. So it gets the UID of the attached object. The advantage of this is when we were looking at it earlier. So if I came back here and I just did icon two equals, and I just dropped this in, what you're gonna see is this has a fixed file path in it. This is using UID. So UID will move around with the object. So if I move this object into another folder, uh, the path would stay working, whereas this old approach, uh, the path would break. Now, to be honest, I would still use this and just change the pathing because this is illegible, like it's gibberish. So again, it's not necessarily a change that I like, but it is one that's available. So by the way, any object, again, when you're bringing it in, hold down the control to drop it in and you will get the UID of said object. So that is the highlights of the 4.5 release. Again, very, very early on. We're going to see several of these before final release. So this isn't, this is just the beginning of new features in Godot 4.5. Again, we have the mute game toggle available in the game window. We have the ability to drop uh, preload resources as a UID, uh, multiple selections at, on your runtime evaluation. And then the big new one, in my humble opinion, is this chunking of tile map physics which again gives you a single physics collision shape instead of one per tile. So you're going to get huge performance gains if you are using physics in a 2D tile map based game because it's all being consolidated into a single uh, collision shape, which is nice. And then we got a number of other um, improvements like smaller things, fixes and that kind of stuff here as well. In total, this release actually has 403 fixes in it. Uh, but the key thing here, new features, we just looked at them. Uh, let me know what you think. So I'm going to do one of these videos probably for most dev releases, uh, unless it's a very small release, or and then I might put two or three of them in together into a single video. But let me know what you think. Let me know what you think of this ongoing coverage. And ladies and gentlemen, are you waiting for Godot 4.5? Let me know what you think. Comments down below. I'll talk to you all later. Goodbye.